Welcome everyone to the grand opening of the Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging Clinic. This is actually the second grand opening uh, since we did this last week. But uh, uh, we decided to have two open houses because we've had so many people uh, wanting to come. Um, and I appreciate all of you coming instead of going to or listening to or watching the World Series. TiVo rules! Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> one nothing. Okay, so that's the update. One nothing, Giants are ahead. Good. All right. So we're here on this very special occasion to thank uh, the many individuals that made this clinic uh, possible um, and also those that are going to help to keep it running in a smooth and efficient way on a daily basis. The clinic is actually already operational. Patients were in here throughout the day today, and we just wrapped up a little earlier in the evening with them. Um, this clinic was actually agreed to be built about eight years ago now. So it's taken about eight years for uh, the clinic to come to fruition for many reasons, one of which was that a lot of the activities that were going on in this space had to be transitioned to another space. That took time, obviously a lot of planning. but I hope you'll agree if you haven't already seen it after you see it that it's been well worth the wait. This is really a state-of-the-art facility with a lot of uh, important new equipment that I'll tell you about briefly that I think will change how we manage patients over the years. The clinic costs well over 25 million dollars to build. Um, it's a, um, a real uh, effort by the hospital board and uh, the dean's office and by many people in the Department of Radiology and others to bring it to fruition. And that's a large part of the reason why we're here, is to thank all those people today. If you haven't seen it, what housed in each of these rooms are state-of-the-art PET CT scanners. There are two brand new PET CT scanners, a SPECT camera, SPECT CT, state-of-the-art cardiac imaging system, and other new technologies that we hope will eventually be here, including ways to do a lot of what we do today without the use of radioactivity. So you might wonder what makes this particular branch of medicine called nuclear medicine and molecular imaging unique. What is nuclear medicine and molecular imaging? This field brings together that area of medicine in which molecular spies or detectives are injected into the body to kind of do a cell by cell search looking for disease. So anytime we think about sending molecules into your body whether those molecules be labeled with radioactivity or in the future be labeled with sound emitting probes or light emitting probes, that field is what's known as nuclear medicine and molecular imaging. Just as a detective might search a city by doing a house to house search looking for problems, these molecular spies or detectives do the same thing in your body. They go around from cell to cell looking for abnormal molecules, molecules that might be indicative of cancer, might be indicative of Alzheimer's disease, as well as other diseases. And in the back of this clinic is also something very unique, and that is an actual laboratory where these molecules are built. So before you can inject the molecules into the body, you have to have made them, you have to have synthesized them, and so in the back of this clinic is a radiochemistry facility that will be fully FDA compliant so that we can make the molecules and inject them into the patients as they come into the clinic. So over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to go through many groups of names of people that have been very helpful to bring this clinic to life. We'd love to actually bring each one up and present them with a special plaque, um, but because that would take two to three hours, uh, we've decided to talk <coughs> and thank them in groups of individuals. Uh, many of you have plaques waiting. Uh, some of you don't, and you might wonder why. Uh, <laughs> but no, most of you, if not everyone, has plaques waiting. Uh, and I apologize if we've missed everyone. It's, it's certainly uh, not by intention. And I also apologize if we've missed anyone who's also been helpful to the clinic that I didn't catch. So the first group of people I want to thank are the people that actually start sometimes as early as 2 AM in the morning someone has to build these molecular spies. And the group in cyclotron chemistry, radiochemistry, makes these spies. And some of them arrive at work every day at around 2 in the morning. So for those of you that have a tough time coming in at 9, uh, consider yourselves lucky. 
uh, these group of people uh, are really the first starting point for the molecular imaging techniques. So I want to thank David Dick, Fred Chin, George Montoya, Murugesan Subarayan, and Rona Berganos. And with all of them are the health physicist and radiation safety physics group, which include Lance Phillips, John Kofi, and Don Bangart. Also, after patients get here, and before they can be injected with the spies, a whole slew of technologists help get the scanners ready, help to take the patients to rooms where they can be injected with the molecular spies. And these technologists work very hard every day to make sure that patients go through in a very smooth fashion. So special thanks to Christine Fuji, Elizabeth Farmer, Matt Gabriel, Nora Gurvich, Christabel Chavez, Khan Luong, Lincoln Sanders, Lou Nguyen, Paolo Castaneda, and Shana Kinsella. And also the technical manager, uh, Jayesh Patel, who helps uh, many activities, but also helps manage all the different technologists. Finally, many nurses are involved, nurses that help patients when we do cardiac stress tests, nurses that help with anesthesia, and they all make the work more pleasant for the physicians, technologists, and are really important for patient care. Claudia Cooper, Harmandeep Madra, Debbie Akers, Elizabeth Frazier, Rachel Reyes, Spencer Miller, Teresa Padron, and Veronica Callister. Special thanks to all of you. And then there are many people that are the physicians that actually interpret the studies, that actually take the images as they come off these scanners and look for the problems in each patient. And these physicians are specially trained to interpret PET-CT scans, SPEC scans, as well as also perform therapies using these molecular spies. So special thanks to Dr. Eric Mitra, Andre Garu, Andy Kwan, Christine Keeling, Larry Basso, Bob Herfkins, Ross McDougall, Ann Leung, Brooke Jeffrey, George Siegel, Joe Wu, Manal Vasnavala, and Dr. Michael Gorris. And also special thanks to Craig Levine in physics, who helps make sure that the physics component of these scanners is on track. Now, I want to in particular thank Michael and Ross, who have been at Stanford for almost as long as I am of age, OK? Uh, I, Ross and Michael have waited a long time to get up to this clinic. In fact, poor Ross has already retired. And uh, now he finally is here in the clinic. But Ross and Michael have done a phenomenal job building this field over the years. And uh, we're very thankful to them, along with the new generation of physicians, Eric, Andre, Andy, uh, uh, as well as the others. Um, so special thanks to you guys for helping keeping the clinic going. Our residents and fellows who are learning these techniques help to make the patient experience pleasant every day. Ed Wong, Guido Davidson, Arash Kardan, Judy Nguyen, Sami Akram, and then the residency program, house office director Ann Doan, who's always very helpful to us, including in a recent ACGME site visit. Special thanks to the Nuclear Medicine, MIPS, Radiology Administration, Elizabeth Gill, Karen Aguilar, Donna Nirenberger, Lindy Burton, Mary Troyer, Sophia Gonzalez, Sandra Horn, Wei Zhang, and also Susan Singh, who's volunteering tonight to help with the clinic. Special thanks to even people that register all the patients. Before they ever come in, they're registered, and we've got a very efficient registration system and scheduling system. So Angelus, who I know is here tonight, who's been with us for a long time, Beverly Pervance, Chona Disimoto, Crystal Custodia, Irma Munoz, Michael Fabish, Ravi Sharma, Tony Irvin Grayson, Brenda Mack, and Matea Kolick. Thank you very much for all your hard efforts. Then to wrap up in the last few minutes with these thanks before we give a big round of applause to everyone, special thanks to all the individuals that actually helped build this clinic. So this was a huge effort with an architectural team, all the technologists, physicians, hospital uh, administration to make this a reality. And I want to especially thank Jason Holbrook, Chris Ty, Philip Ting, Melinda Garner, Elizabeth Nielsen, Emily Morgan, Greg McCown, Jim Embleton, Pam Ross, Shandy Bonner, Carlos Villalva, and also in IT, helping us to get the IT part of this clinic right, Martin Minogue. 
Finally, none of this would have been possible without the vision of several people eight years ago to make this clinic a reality. It takes a lot for people to believe in something as expensive as this, as well as futuristic. You know, if you were to talk to people about putting molecular spies into your body that are going to go look for diseases and to do it eventually without the use of radioactivity, it takes a big trust and confidence and a vision to say that is going to be possible. And I want to in particular thank Dean Pizzo for believing in us and in this whole field, Dr. Gary Glazer, Chairman of Radiology and believing in us, Martha Marsh, the CEO of the hospital, Mike Peterson, now the acting CEO of the hospital, Jerry Mackey, Dan Ginsburg, and then also Matt Heisen, Paul Curley, who's now gone, and Mary Bobel. All of them were instrumental in believing that this clinic could get done and actually bring to bear resources to help making it happen. And special thanks to our referring physicians, all the doctors who send patients here to help them be managed in the right way. I also want to especially thank uh, the Canary Foundation and Don Listwin and Hillary Valentine who are here have helped make this clinic a reality along with its sister counterpart, the Canary Center at California Avenue. Don has a big belief and shares in the vision with Dean Pizzo, myself and others that eventually we will be successful through early detection of cancer. So instead of waiting and detecting people when it's relatively late, the technologies you see in these hallways that we replace by newer generation technologies over the years, including ones being built in the Canary Center, will someday lead to much more improved patient care because we'll catch disease very early when we have the best chance of curing it. So special thanks to you, Don, and to Hillary for supporting us. And we really appreciate your belief in us and your shared vision that this is going to be a wave of the future for all of healthcare. And also other foundations in the community, the Ben and Catherine Ivey Foundation, which is helping us with brain cancer research, the Bonnie Adario Foundation for lung cancer research, the Lucas Foundation, and many other donors. And finally, special thanks to Sheila Galupo, who's actually made tonight's event possible. Uh, she actually had the cake and drinks and everything else. So let's give everyone here a round of applause. I think we've thanked everyone who's attending, uh, other than a few people. Uh, and for those of you that uh, aren't being thanked, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you played a role as well. Uh, but thank you very much.